What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing yet again another overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about a couple of trades that I made here today on the 10th of April in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I've been getting a bunch of questions on and that I personally see potential in here over these next couple of weeks in April of 2019. 2019. But before we do get into all of these different topics, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content, all I ask from you is to go down below and feel free to hit that like button, guys. If you like the videos, go down, hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general, and I really do appreciate every single one of you out there that watches these videos, that hits the like button, that subscribes to the channel. It really does mean a lot to me. So let's just get right into the topic of today's video and Cron is one of the ones I'm going to be talking about. So wait a couple of minutes down the road in this video, but let's just start off with the S&P 500 here, the SPX, the 500 largest traded publicly traded US companies. And we can see here I am recording this video with about 12 minutes left in the market. So unless anything crazy happens, you know, we're going to end up closing the day here slightly green on the SPX, right? We're up about almost $9 right now, up 0.3%. Pretty nice recovery day from the red day that we had yesterday. And if we're looking over here at the Dow Jones, we're actually pretty flat, right? Down only 10 points, which is putting it down about 0.04%. So very little movement there in terms of the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ today, guys, pretty solid day here. We're peaking out of that resistance that we've been talking about. We're up almost 40 points right now up about half a percent here in this index, performing the best out of all of the other three indexes that we do follow. And a lot of the tech stocks have been doing very well today. We see Microsoft popping back up into the 120s. Apple dipped down a bit earlier today. We saw it was red yesterday. It snapped that nine-day winning streak, but we're back into the 200s today, back up to 200 plus. So a lot of the tech stocks are doing well. You know, NASDAQ, the NASDAQ itself is a tech heavy um, index. So this could be why, you know, the NASDAQ is performing well. So let's hop back over here to the SPX. Let's break down some resistances, some supports, and do some technical analysis here very quickly and really just do a rundown of what I am seeing. So let's just hop to this 20 day chart very quickly so we can get a closer look at what's been happening. So for those of you all that don't know, or for those of you all that have not been following my videos, you know, we peaked out of the 2890 level of resistance. We held it as a support back on the 5th of April. And at this point in time, I was telling myself and relaying in these videos, I was saying, okay, now that we just did this, right, now that we broke this resistance, maintaining it as a new support, the next spot I'm going to be looking for is 2905, which is the next resistance on the S&P 500. And if we hop over here to the one, uh, 184 hour chart, you know, that's right at a previous support from back in uh, September of 29 or 2018, rather, right? But we saw, you know, the day after that, we ended up breaking that 2890 level. We ended up gapping down to about 2880, popped up again. We broke it up again, but then we failed to hold it as a support. Then we, fe we fell. This was on, um, this was yesterday, actually. We fell pretty aggressively. We gapped down, had a pretty decent red day. And today, we actually ended up popping back up, right? We can see we popped up this morning, but we ended up getting rejected by the 180 simple moving average here, um, you know, forming a lower high from the previous. So at this point in time, I was like, okay, this might be another red day since we got rejected here at a lower high from the previous and we were pushing down aggressively earlier this morning. But we can see, you know, we ended up breaking out of this resistance at about 28.85 and we see a surge in the markets here more more towards the end of the day, this was more uh, about an hour ago from now, we saw the push from 2880 uh, all the way up to about 2890, where it seems like we're getting rejected now by that same resistance that was once a support a couple of days ago at 2890. So guys, 
The S&P is recovering decently today, right? Not a crazy recovery day whatsoever, but it is a slight recovery day. And again, we are right under that resistance at about 2890. And on the intraday charts, it seems like we are getting rejected there. So what I'm going to be watching for, and I'm going to try, and if, if I remember, I'm going to come back towards the end of this video to see where we ended up closing at. But I want to see tomorrow, are we going to end up you know, having another green day potentially pushing out of this 2890 resistance because that's what we need to see for the S&P 500 to really test those all-time highs that we've been talking about here. But the good thing that I am seeing here in the SPX is the fact that we are pushing up today, the fact that we are pushing green today is telling me that we're maintaining this 50 simple moving average support here on the 20 day one hour chart at a higher low from the previous low, which was at about 2870. So as of now, guys, again, with about eight minutes left in the markets, we are maintaining a higher low that uptrend is still intact. So just watch out for those levels tomorrow guys that should benefit you in your analysis to see where the markets are headed so you can plan your trades accordingly so let's hop back over here guys to the dow jones very flat today guys not much to really say on it because again it didn't really do anything today really we can see it's literally not even down 0.1 it's not even up 0.1 percent it's pretty flat but just to recap for all you new viewers out there the dow ended up breaking the 26,200 level of resistance from uh, a couple a uh, couple weeks ago and then the, the one from a couple of months ago right we ended up breaking that level and then we got rejected by the next resistance which was at about 26,400 dollars and we were talking about how for a couple of days really one or two trading days here we were trading between these levels of 26.2 and 26.4 right that 200 dollar little level that's where we were trading between and then yesterday we had that pretty decent red day where we broke that 26.2 level of support and now it's looking like we're maintaining the next support level here with this green uh, candlestick starting to form at around $26,100 so just keep an eye tomorrow guys are we going to, let's say, break this level of support? If we do, the next level I'm going to be looking for is 26000 flat or around $25,900. That should put us right at this old resistance, now a new support, as well as the 50 simple moving average support right here. So those are a couple of levels that I'm watching in terms of the Dow on a technical basis. And we can see it a bit easier here. We can see it's maintaining that support very nicely from a couple of days ago, like I said. And sometimes it's just easier to look at a couple of different time frames. I think it's always good to look at a bunch of different time frames when doing your analysis. And especially if you want to see some shorter term intraday movement, what's been going on over the past, let's say, week or two, it's obvious it's uh, you know it's a pretty good idea to look at the 20 day chart let's say the 10 day chart the 30 day chart and you can always customize your charts here just a quick little think or swim tip you can always customize your charts right let's say you want to add you know a two day chart a 30 day chart a 40 day chart you can always do that here and you can find resources on YouTube to do that I don't want to spend too much time on this but there's very good ways or there's a lot of ways out there to customize your platform the way you want it so the Dow that is what I'm looking at here guys you know the Nasdaq again pretty solid day today you know we're testing that resistance at about 7336 which was a really a resistance from back in the middle of September in 2018 back towards the end of September in 2018 and it was actually a support level back towards the beginning of October in 2018 before we ended up crashing very heavily we all know that that time period a couple of months ago when we crashed very heavily big time period for me in terms of buying stocks I know a lot of you guys out there were buying stocks as well but those are the levels crazy I know very very crazy that we are testing again guys it's crazy we went all the way down to 5800 now we're popping all the way back almost to 7800 that's a 2000 point move in the nasdaq here 
you know, in literally almost about four months, right? Four months, the stock or the NASDAQ has moved incredibly, right? So not much to touch upon here. Just keep an eye, you know, if we break this level of resistance here, 73 or 76.30, you know, we're going to be straight shooting for those all-time highs, which at that point, guys, we're only about 1.2%. 2% off from those highs, which again is absolutely insane, right? So this is what I'm looking at, you know, in terms of the NASDAQ. And of course, if we pull back tomorrow, make sure or just keep an eye on rather, are we going to maintain the support here at about 75.50, the 50 simple moving average as well. Those have been two strong support levels here on the NASDAQ over the past couple of trading weeks. So that's what the overall market you know, is looking like. And again, we'll pop over here very quickly in a couple of minutes to see where we did end up closing. And now let's just talk about a couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching, a bunch that I've been getting questions on, and what I did today in terms of my trading. So in terms of my trading, guys, I know you saw in the title, AMD Swing Trade. Yes, I am in AMD. That is one of the positions that I did end up taking today. And very briefly here, guys, you know, I like AMD the way it's been moving here. And very briefly, we can see, you know, it held that 50 simple moving average support that has been a support here over the past couple of weeks and we saw the big pullback from about $30 down to about $27 here we maintained that level today we saw a pretty big sell-off intraday here um, you know in the middle of the day from highs at about $28.05 down to about $27.45 and as we started to pop up here you know this is actually where I did end up taking my position in, um, you know, advanced micro devices, right? We broke out of that 50 simple moving average resistance here. We started to reverse. We held the, uh, you know, the, the, the support rather from the beginning of the market here at around 2740. We pretty much bounced at that level exactly. And I just took a little position here at around $27 and 57 cents. And this is a position again, that I'm looking to swing trade. And when I'm swing trading, I scale into my positions, meaning I only take about 10, 20, sometimes 30% of my goal position at first, depending on what I'm trading, whether it's a large cap, small cap, there's a lot of different things that goes into it. And as that stock continues to push up, right, I end up adding more money to that position, you know, as it continues to go up, or let's say it sells off initially, I reevaluate the situation and then make the decision on whether or not I want to add more at that point, right? And this is something that I always do. And I preach on all, not all of these videos, but I talk about it pretty much on a weekly basis here on these videos. And it's a great way to mitigate your risk, especially if you're starting out with a smaller amount of capital, right? If you have a thousand dollars to trade, you don't want to just hop in right away with a thousand dollars and just really go all in on a position, right? That's the power of Robinhood because Robinhood free, um, or there goes the market. It's a free app in terms of commissions, right? Even if you have a thousand dollars, you can scale in with $250 um, stakes and not pay a commission, right? And this mitigates your risk, especially if you have a smaller account. So let's say the stock goes down 10% overnight, 5% overnight, whatever. You're not losing as much money as you would if you went all in on your position right off the bat, right? So that's the power and uh, really uh, the technique I use in terms of scaling. So AMD is one that I'm looking to swing trade, right? I think there's a lot of positive sentiment around this stock right now. We can see this big surge here, um, you know, with, with the Google partnership a couple of weeks ago, right? The stock went from 23, you know, all the way to nearly $28 per share in the matter of a couple of days. You know, if we go to the live news here, we can see, you know, a bunch of, there's just a bunch of, po again, positive sentiment, right? AMD stock gains after analyst says its chips will beat Intel. You know, this price target was raised to $33 from an analyst here. You know, another price target was raised to $35. This price target was raised to $35 from $30 by Bank of America. And typically, guys, you know, um, you know, people out there, 
you know, analysts, you know, th when they raise stocks prices, you know, it doesn't always mean the stock is going to go up, right? But there is positive sentiment around the stock, you know, typically when an analyst raises uh, uh, stocks prices, right? And that's not always the case, but sometimes it is the case, right? So AMD, I am looking to swing trade this one with the goal sell right now at about $30. If we do end up breaking this next resistance, which is at $30. And let's say we break that resistance. I'm going to reevaluate what I want to do with my shares at that point in time. So let's talk about NVIDIA very quickly because this is another position right uh, that I'm in right now. This is another chip company and a lot of the chip companies have been doing very well recently, right? You notice NVIDIA, Micron, you know, uh, Qual and I don't know about Qualcomm. Has Qualcomm been doing great? Let me just take a look at Qualcomm very quickly. I think it's been doing well. Yep, over over the past couple of months, it's been doing well. You know, MU, MU's been doing well. You know, a lot of these chip companies have been doing pretty solid recently. Right, and I've been swing trading a lot of these, and they've been doing well for me. So, Nvidia is one that I actually added a little bit more money into today as well. Right, and this is one that I talked about um, in my morning video today. I actually did, did a little 60 second clip on it on my Instagram. And if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, get on my Instagram page, guys. You should be following me. The link's down below, and I would really appreciate it if you guys did follow me. All it is is my name, Stas or Fest, no spaces, underscores, nothing like like that. So give me a follow on there. And I talked about it on there, right? And we can see, you know, the main thing I was pointing out is that we ended up holding, you know, 188, that level of support a couple of days ago. And now we're looking to make a higher high and really continue the uptrend pattern here. So I saw that we did maintain the 189 level of support again, and we started to pop up into the 190s this morning. And I ended up just buying a little bit more in my NVIDIA position, right? So now I've scaled into this one about two times. And my goal sell is around 196 to 197, right around this level, putting us a little bit below that uh, resistance at about 203. I don't want to get too greedy and aim for that next resistance because it is about $10 away. I want to be able to grab that profit, you know, right around this level. So in terms of my swing trading, that's what I ended up doing today. And day trading, guys, I really didn't do any day trading today. No day trades. I was mostly, you know, watching the markets today, you know, keeping up with the news, you know, looking at the chip stocks, you know, planning out some swing trades. That's what I ended up doing, right? And I don't always day trade. I'm sure a lot of you already know that for those of you that all that have been following the channel, but you know, swing trading is what I really prefer to be completely honest with you guys, because I've had a bit more success with it, um, you know, over the course of my, uh, you know, trading career, right? Of course, I've had success with day trading, right? But it's a bit more risky, you know, it's a bit more, uh, you know, emotional, emotionally driven. And, you know, that's something that, a lot of us traders just have to tackle, right? When, when in terms of trading, you know, we have to tackle our emotions. And, you know, that's just something that, um, you know, I've been uh, dealing with lately, right? You know, we all deal with that. So let's talk about uh, you know, what other stocks that I was talking about earlier, we can see Cron is one that, uh, you know, I've been getting a bunch of questions on, right? Ticker symbol C-R-O-N. And the gist of this, guys, is, you know, Cron seems to be at that point in time where it's just selling off, right? It's just selling off. We saw that big pump up early in 2019. The stock nearly doubled. I think it did double. I think it almost tripled, actually. And now we're just seeing a bearish cross on the longer term chart chart, right? We're seeing that 50 crossing below the 180 simple moving average. It's acting as a resistance. So honestly, until we break out of this level of resistance or until we find a new support, which at this point, you know, if we were to sell off, maybe back down to the $15 range to the $13 range, I know that's a long way to go from now. You know, I'm not really going to be looking to trade Cron, but let's say we do get to that 13 to $15 range. That is going to be you know, a super interesting price point, in my opinion, for Quran. So that's all I have to say here, um, you know, on ticker symbol CRO. 
O-N. Another one that I was watching was JD.com. And JD.com, ticker symbol JD, ended up breaking that 50 simple moving average support today. We were down about almost 2.5%. So now I want to see, are we going to maintain the $29.60 to $30 level of support here on JD? This is super crucial, in my opinion, for a position here, especially for a swing. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. Might as well just set a quick... Quick, uh, a quick alert right now. Uh, where's the alert? Here it is. Create an alert. Mark is at or let's see. I want to get I want to get alerted is at or below thirty dollars. So let's say you know we break below thirty. This is likely to happen tomorrow potentially if we do see a little pullback. I'm going to be keeping an eye on it to see are we going to maintain that thirty-ish dollar level, hold it as a new support, and from there I'll reevaluate the trade potentially take a trade. So. Uh, JD, I think it's pretty interesting right now. The setup is looking pretty decent, um, you know, today. Apple today, guys, again, like I mentioned earlier on in this video, it seems like we found the low on Apple at about 197. Really, we bounced on top of that old resistance, now a new support. And it's looking like we want to, uh, you know, retest that level that we were at yesterday, which was at about $202, that level of resistance. So, Everything's looking good right now for Apple. We want to continue the uptrend. It seems very obvious here. This is a higher low from the previous. Everything is looking very solid. Just keep an eye tomorrow. Are we going to pop above 202 where we were yesterday? Are we going to maintain 200 officially as a new support before we truck up to, let's say, 210? You know, that's what I'm going to be watching for tomorrow. So let's talk about Tesla very quickly because this is another one that did decent today and I've been getting a bunch of questions on. And Tesla, guys, this is one that, you know, it's been very interesting, the movement of the stock, right? For those of you guys that don't know, I ended up selling out of my Tesla yesterday around 271, 272. But today, it seems like we almost got back to the 280 level pre-market hours, but we ended up getting rejected by that level of resistance, which we all know is a resistance now from a couple of weeks ago. But we ended up holding a higher low from the previous. We bounced on the 180 SMA, and we ended up closing the day pretty short strong, right? So what I'm looking for in Tesla is are we going to end up breaking 180 or 280 rather, right? This is going to be a huge level of resistance for Tesla. If we do, the next spot I can see Tesla going is going to be $290 per share here on a technical basis. And I've been talking about this, how the 180 SMA here and the 50 SMA, both of these levels have been resistance points. And if we want to break out and let's say get back to the $300 level, you know, we're going to need to to break out of this level and that would be honestly a huge breakout move in terms of uh you know tesla here so tsla guys tesla stock super super um you know, interesting right now. It's fighting to recover. It's having a difficult time, but it's fighting to recover here. So that's pretty much it for today's video, guys. Let's just hop back and see where we ended up closing. Okay, the S&P ended up closing up 10 points today, up 0.35%. Let's see exactly where that puts us. That puts us right under that resistance again that we were talking about at around 28.90. So pretty solid close there on the S&P. The Dow or the NASDAQ rather actually popped up aggressively since we talked about it a couple of minutes ago, up 0.64% at the close, up nearly 50 points. So this is a good sign that we're breaking out of that resistance at about 76.30. Very good sign there. And the Dow ended up closing green actually, up seven points, up nearly 0.05%. Not much movement at all, but green throughout the board today, guys, at the close, which is a very, very, um, you know, pretty good sign here, right? So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below and hit that like button, guys. Again, it's, it really supports me and supports the channel in general. If you want to comment something, let me know what you ended up trading today. If you have any video suggestions, drop them down below. I would love to, you know, hear what you guys have to say. And if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe and and, uh, you know, hit that notification bell while you're at it so you're notified every time that I do make a video. Again, I appreciate every single one of you guys, especially if you stuck this long in the video. I really do appreciate you. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I hope you all had a great day today. Good luck tomorrow. Peace out.